All right, everybody, very good afternoon to you all. Um, just gonna stop some videos here quickly. So welcome today to our hospitality presentation. And um, today we're gonna kick off with um, more information about what it is to be an intern in the US. Um, hopefully discuss topics like your requirements, your uh, resorts to choose from, what it's like to be an intern, and then obviously most importantly answer any questions that you might have uh, for me today. So uh, let's get started with our location. Um, just to let you know, obviously this is a program that covers North America, so we have um, resorts throughout the states and um, that could be in your city areas, it could be in your mountainous small uh, resort type where people go on holidays, or it could just be, as I say, the city resorts where there's a lot of conferencing and events and things like that. Um, so there's a mixture of resorts, there's a mix of locations. So uh, when you get uh, signed up for the program, you can choose wherever you would like to be from the list of um, locations that we give you. Um, but we'll get on to that when we talk about the, the um, resort itself. So let's move on to um, a few of our eligibility criteria and what we're looking for in a candidate to be eligible for the program. So first things first, you obviously need to meet a certain criteria. So more 19 through 35, entering before your 36th birthday. Um, with the, the age uh, of the program, it's normally your younger that are straight out of university, college, tertiary studies that are coming onto the program. So those would be more like your intern categories. And then we've got our more experienced chefs and front offices and things like that who are more your 25 to 35 um, and they'll enter the program as what we call a trainee um, with a lot more experience sometimes five years plus so those are your different age ranges you obviously need to know that it's going to be a lot of hard work so when it comes to hospitality probably don't need to tell you how hard you guys work um, your hours can be long and they can be challenging so what you experience with hospitality life here in South Africa is going to be the same over in the States. So you will need a valid South African passport. We accept Namibian passports. And we also, um, obviously, when it comes to different nationalities, let's say Lesotho or Swazi, there are exceptions here or there. So please, if you're not a South African or a straightforward Namibian passport holder, let us know and we'll check on your eligibility when it comes to permits and passports. Good health. Um, <clears throat> unlike myself at the moment, excuse me for the frog in my throat, you do need to be in good health. Um, your, um, your, with your health, you've got your medical insurance and your medical insurance is going to cover you for all major medical emergencies, except for things like um, pre-existing conditions where you've got asthma, um, diabetes, um, what else? Um, any other chronic medication or chronic situation that you're on. So if you have any of those kind of illnesses or anything, please do let us know. And then we can just check if it's going to be a problem at all on the program. Okay. How to be a success on program as well as passing through the program interviewing process is that host companies are looking for applicants who are there for the long term to experience and gain knowledge, okay? They don't want you to come just because you want a job and you want to make some money and then you want to go back home after a year. They really want you to come with an open attitude that you're going to learn about the American culture, about the American people, the American hospitality and customer service industry. So in terms of all of that, that's probably what we compact into your personality in the interview going to be your biggest strength when it comes to getting onto the program and being a success. You're going to live with people from other countries. You're going to experience different situations and sometimes that can be challenging. So being committed, having great communication skills, hardworking, um, a friendly attitude, a nice big smile. Those are things that host companies are looking for to welcome into their resort. 
Cultural awareness, they obviously want to learn about your culture, they want to share the American culture, so you will have little excursions here and there where you'll get to experience um, the American traditions like 4th of July, Thanksgiving, and so and so. But at the same time, you'll be able to share those uh, cultures that we have in South Africa or Namibia or whichever country you're from with the American people as well. So OVC do help you with a lot of the support on the program to get you there. In other words, with your application, with placing you, helping you to organize housing, um, what else, visas, flights, all those arrangements. So once you are on the program, it's important to note that although we're still around and you have the support of partners that side, you do need to be independent. Um, you know, if you've got a problem in the workplace, with a colleague, with housing, you know, you can also and are expected to sort that out with the relevant departments, but we will be here to guide you along the way for sure. Um, all right, financial budgeting, some of you might be leaving home for the first time, so that's quite um, a challenge, uh, you know, being able to pay rent, buy food, transport, cover any other personal items, those are things that you're income and your stipend which you earn are going to cover so you must make sure that you budget financially well otherwise you're going to get through the month and then you're not going to have money for rent or food or anything like that all right so I spoke about two different categories the first category is the intern program <clears throat> the intern program are current students or recent graduates those are guys who are currently in their first year minimum or their final year of studies, or if you now, where we now, um, June, so yeah, you guys could be graduating right now, June, if you're doing the mid-year thing, um, otherwise you might have graduated in November, December. So all of those guys who are within 12 months of graduation, or currently as students, are interns. So in other words, sometimes you come into the program maybe with less work experience, um, maybe no work experience at all, and that's okay. Um, employers will be open to that. So, so host companies do take you fresh with maybe just theory and maybe just a month or two of practical experience, maybe no official industry time. Um, so applicants with such applications must provide passport, resume, qualification, if you have it, if you haven't graduated yet, a letter from your institute, um, there is no work experience required in this section. However, if you have, it is a bonus, so always pop it in. Um, and then you must be in America before 12 months of your um, graduation date, if you have no work experience. Then we have our trainee category. So these are the guys with a little bit more experience, um, whether it be in the workplace um, for as much as five years, or maybe not even just maybe a year, but oops, sorry about that. Um, but with this one, your, um, your same things apply. So passport resume, here you will put in your qualification that you've achieved minimum of 12 months, but then we will need work references from your host company, employer, practical training center, wherever it's been that you've gone and worked, we will need um, references from them. Those must have your dates of employment on, they must be signed by the supervisor, et cetera, et cetera. And those documents will then show that you have either 12 or 60 months experience, whichever category you're trying to fit into. Um, we would also need your academic records and institution letters. But all of this stuff, we can definitely recap when you have applied with us to lead you through that process. <clears throat> the type of um, categories available for placement are, um, sorry about that, are culinary, it's our most common one, we've got front office, and then we've got your food and beverage. So there you're going to be looking at um, the, like the rotation within, so you don't really do a rotation from being in the kitchen to at the front desk to in the restaurants. But within the culinary internship, you will have periods where you're moving around. So you'll do two, three months in the one kitchen, two, three months in the next kitchen. And so you will make up your time that over a year in America, 
you will probably work within three to four different places within the same resort. So as you can imagine, our resorts are quite big. They have multiple restaurants. They have multiple places for you to learn and, and experience things. So that's important to note that you won't just do the same job the whole time. The program is 12 months. Um, you will get an opportunity to have what we call the 13th month, which is quite cool. Um, <clears throat> and with that, when you're in your 12 months, any time that you want to take off, maybe do some traveling, um, you know, just uh, sort of see the sites and places in America, you can definitely do that. Internship life, what is it like? Um, a lot of people ask us what it's like to be in America. Super awesome. Um, but other than that, uh, it is a great place to learn. Americans have a very high level of customer service. Um, simply, you know, comparing it to South African industry, that, that on its own is a massive learning curve. <clears throat> but typical life in America when it comes to working is 32 plus hours per week. And um, as I mentioned, you've got your training phases. So you'll move around into different um, uh, sort of restaurants, parts of the resort, et cetera, and, and do your training. Any time off that you take is not going to be paid. So do time off wisely. Make sure that you save up money to be able to take some time off, that you can still pay rent, buy food, cover all your personal items. Um, but still have a little bit of a break, whether it be going on a trip or simply just spending the weekend at home with your feet up, you know, normal life like you would do here in South Africa. Same applies there. Um, travel time in America, you take off during the 12 months. But then, as I mentioned, you do get a 13th month to travel um, in the States, which states, which is quite fun. Um, so we'll talk about that when you have signed up with OVC, whether you want to fly on a one-way ticket and fly home after your 13 months, or if you want to go on a 12-month um, uh, program on a one-year return ticket to match it, it's up to you. Just excuse me for one second. Sorry about that. Got some background noise here I'm a bit worried about. So um, then we talk about the $10 per hour minimum as your starting pay rate. So when it comes to your earnings, you earn $10 per hour and it can go up to $16 per hour. Each and every resort pays differently. And the reason being is because of the state that you live in, the experience level you have, um, the cost of living in the location is a variety of different factors. But when you've signed up, you'll get a full list of resorts along with the location, the earnings, um, the role, um, what else, the housing, and all of that sort of stuff you'll be able to see before your interview so that when you go into your interview, you are prepared with all the information that you need. You'll also do assessments through the time. So it's not just a case of going there, doing your job, and that's it. You will move from um, when you go on to your six months, move through a little uh, assessment just to see what you've learned, make sure that you're all good, and then come the end of the year as well. You'll also receive a completion certificate from our partners in the US. And you will also receive a reference letter from the employer that you worked with. So it's continual training and growth, hopefully, for you through the process. So these are some of the resorts that we do currently place with. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about um, COVID. So when it comes to COVID and traveling, uh, the US currently has a travel ban for South Africans. So we, um, yeah, we can apply. So you can apply to the program. We can place you. Um, we can obviously get you ready for a visa. But at the moment, you cannot go into the embassy for a visa appointment. The travel ban is a one month by month type thing. So currently, the travel ban is till the 21st of July. 
means that no South African can go to America on a normal J-1 visa at this point. Um, they must wait until the travel ban is sort of released, taken away, whatever you want to call it. Um, once the travel ban has been lifted, then you guys will be able to go to the embassy, you'll be able to do your visa, and once your visa is approved, we can book your flights and off you go. So at the moment, all of the host companies are interviewing for start dates as early as 1st of September. You will um, match with, with the resort, let's say they want you in September or October for that particular date. Some of our employers are looking already ahead for November, December, January, February. So depending on each resort is very different. To just explain a few of these ones, we've got Great Wolf Lodge and Kalahari. Those are very much um, family style resorts, almost like Sun City, where they've got big water parks, um, lots of accommodation, lots of different restaurants available in there. And then um, you've got your more high end resorts, which are things like your Ritz Carlton, La Cantera, and so on. And then you've got like casino type resorts, so Monarch, Atlantis, um, you know, so you can obviously see the different types of people that are going to go to all these different types of resorts. Um, each and every one's location is all over. So looking at the screen, I know that a lot of these are in Texas. Um, we've got um, all the way north. So you've got um, Wisconsin, uh, Ohio, You've got Cliff House, which is um, also out north. Um, so we've got, um, where is it on the list here? Uh, I don't think it's on here, unless my eyes are tricking me. But um, Ocean Edge, which is also up north. So there's Maine, Vermont, um, so around Boston area, if you know America. Um, and then you'll also have things in Florida, um, the Colorado Rockies. Uh, that's very, very popular. So all over the place. So you will get a list, definitely doesn't look like this, but the um, platform to be able to go and explore these different hotels, see who they are, their locations, and all that you need to know about them. And then you will say, I would like to interview with Atlantis or Kalahari or Great Wolf Lodge, and you choose which one works for you best and we will present you for an interview. If you do your interview and you are not successful, you will simply choose another resort and another resort until you are placed. However, most people do get their first choice unless it's a really, really tough um, host company and they want quite a bit of experience or they're looking for something in particular, um, then you'll often find that interviews, you might not secure one on your first attempt Maybe you have to go with a less high-end resort or one that wants more in line with what you have experienced with. So lovely resorts to choose from. Um, I've been fortunate enough to visit a lot of resorts as well. So you guys are really in for a great treat um, when it comes to getting that experience overseas and where you're going to live. Um, it's a 12-month opportunity to brand your resume, uh, you know, multicultural globally networking, putting international work experience on your, your resume. These are just benefits over and above simply the fact that you've lived and worked in America that you need to remember. So um, bear that in mind, um, you know, that you're also really buffing up your resume. And that's what you want to do, because when you want to climb the industry and hospitality, um, my personal experience is it's where you've been, where you've worked, who you've worked with, um, and that being able to open doors for yourself. So nothing better than going to work for a Ritz-Carlton, um, you know, to go and try and get into a nice hotel industry here within South Africa when you get back. So this is just a, a little run through of everything provided by your um, host company, i.e. sponsor and um, part, our partner in America. So their responsibility is to screen host companies. Uh, that means that as you apply with the OVC and we go through all your documentation, so does somebody on the American side look for resorts and screen potential um, 
host uh, companies that side, making sure that they have suitable accommodation in the area, that they're going to be providing you with the correct training, um, that they're not just putting you in the job just to leave you in the corner and hope for the best, that it's really going to be a great learning experience. Um, and obviously also to support you through the year whilst you are in country. They do arrange fun activities. So when you go on the program, you won't be the only person in the area um, from South Africa necessarily, or on a J1 program, you'll have other interns. Um, there's thousands of people from around the world that partake in the J1 program every year. So you'll meet lots of people from different countries and you'll do these cultural activities say once every two months or whatever it might be. You do regularly have to check in with the sponsor company that side. Um, so sponsor doesn't mean a financial sponsor. It means that they are responsible for making sure of your health, self, safety and welfare while on program um, and that you're not being human trafficked as we speak. Um, and uh, that's done via service check-ins. So every month you'll have to confirm that you are still living where you're living, that you're still happy in your employment option, that you're learning, experiencing things, um, and that you're okay on program. They also provide you with a one-year travel insurance policy so that you, for any major medical emergencies, have cover. It is most certainly not a doctor's plan. So if you have a cough or the flu, you need to sort yourself out. You are an adult, so that will be your own financial responsibility. This is like a hospital cover for major medical emergencies. If you cut your finger off in the kitchen, if you get hit by a bus, if you have food poisoning and are hospitalized for two, three days, um, you know, if you have a burst appendix, those are medical emergencies, not coughs and flus and aches and pains. So please note that that kind of stuff will not be covered. And medical cover, medical emergencies, um, treatment, anything like that in America is very expensive. So it's as important that you are fit and healthy and remain fit and healthy through the program, preferably. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the costs of the program. There are two different cost setups. Um, they are identical to each other, except for one big thing, which is your program fee. Um, and that is being offered on a deferment program. So either you can pay the full fee in South Africa, or you can choose to pay a portion here and the balance on your program. So let's have a look at the cost breakdown. This can be sent to you from um, OVC as well with a nice explanation. So um, just bear in mind, obviously this is just to get the content out to you today more in-depth stuff we can definitely help you with um, from our side once this is done. You'll pay an application fee when you submit your documents to OVC, which is 500 Rand. Those documents get sent to me and I check through all of them. And if everything is good, you've been accepted, you will need to pay your acceptance fee of, call it 8,000 Rand. So 8,500 is the first sign-up fee that you pay um, this will get you onto the program and will get you access to the list of host companies that we have for you. You can then make your selection as to which host company you'd like to interview with. And once you've done so and you have been successfully placed on the program, you will then pay your program fee. Now, this is the program fee, which, as I mentioned, you can break down into two parts. So either you can pay only $400 in South Africa and $2,000 when you are in America, or you can pay the full $2,400 in South Africa. And all it's going to do is increase your upfront cost. If you choose to break it up and pay it back in America with a smaller portion here, it means that you will pay $2,000 over 10 months at $200 per month. So if you wanna pay it back quicker than 10 months, if you, um, you know, wanna take it exactly 10 months, it's totally up to you. But the program fee, either which way to participate is $2,400.
The travel insurance is included in that. So your travel insurance is the hospital top cover or medical cover that I mentioned. Once your program fee has been paid, you pay your visa that you pay to the American embassy, it's 380 US dollars. And then you've got your flight cost, which will vary. Now your flight costs varies because of a number of different factors. You can either fly on a one way or a return ticket. Bearing in mind, if you choose to go on the one way, then you include the 13th month if you wanna do some traveling afterwards. But if you wanna go on a 12 month program, you could choose to do a, a return ticket. <clears throat> if you fly into the Kalahari Resorts or if you fly into the Ritz Carlton, they are in different locations in America. So the cost of the airplane ticket is going to be different. Each resort wants you on a different day. So depending on the time that you fly will depend on the cost of the flight as well. So we will give you an exact quote for an available seat. And then it can range from 10 to 20,000 Rand, depending <clears throat> on those factors that I've mentioned. So the last thing is the spending money. Your spending money is money that you take with you to America and you can take $1,000, you can take up to $1,500. It depends on the location that you're going to, as well as also the um, amount of money that you need to put down on your rent. Um, what else? Um, transport costs, food costs. It also depends on what day the host company is going to pay you for the first time. So often when you arrive in America, you will not receive your first paycheck until two to four weeks later. And so because of this, the money that you take with you has to get you through to your first paycheck. You don't start a job in South Africa and all of a sudden have money on day two. You only get paid maybe after two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, depending on your employer's payroll. So the same thing goes, you need to arrive in America, you will need to pay housing and setup costs, of anywhere between $500 and $800, transport costs, food, and get yourself, as I say, through to that first paycheck. The total cost, going back one slide, of the minimum amount required in RANDs, roughly, remember exchange rates change permanently, and so are some of these figures in dollars gonna vary. So if you pay your application, your acceptance, $400 program fee, your um, <clears throat> visa, the minimum flight cost, and the minimum spending money, the RAND amount is 45,000 RAND, and that can go up to 60,000 RAND. If you decide that you want to pay for your full program fee, the cost you see in yellow in South Africa, you will pay anywhere up to 30,000 Rand more based on the exchange rates, because the exchange rates at the moment is about one to 13, 14, somewhere there. Okay. So a minimum of 45 to 60,000 Rand is required to do the program if you are signing up at the moment. That will cover all of your costs. You complete your application documents. You're going to send them through to us. We're going to check them, send them through to the States get you accepted, you're going to get your suggestions of your host companies, you're going to do your interview with your host company, and at the moment all of the interviews are being done via Skype. You're then going to be placed and you're going to sign all your offer letters and all your documents and we're going to prep you and get you ready for your visa, and the next step that will come is your visa application. Now you can see it's yellow, because at this point, this is how far we can go. You cannot get a visa at the moment. So you can go all the way from application to placement, but you cannot proceed past visa application. And you most certainly can't fly or book your flights as yet. So if you are interested in signing up for the program, it's very important to note that some things can be done now, and then as soon as the visa ban lifts, the rest of the process will take place. Because a lot of people are sitting at home going, oh, I can't do anything. 
or I can do everything, or what can I do? And this is what you can do so far. So if you are interested and if you have the money to apply, then please do sign up and pay your application fee, find yourself a wonderful host company, and let's get you placed. And as soon as the visa ban lifts, we'll have you in the embassy with the visa and on your way to America. So that's the process, guys. I'm going to open the floor to any questions that you might have. If you want to raise your hand and ask your question, if you'd like to um, type your question in the chat box, that's up to you. Uh, but you'll see there's a little raised hand button, and then I can unmute you, um, or you can just type your questions. But Otherwise, that's it for today. Um, hopefully that gave you some more insights into the life of being a hospitality intern or trainee. Um, and hopefully if you haven't applied yet, we will be seeing your application really soon. So over to you guys for questions and thanks for those who have tuned in to listen.